Well, so today we're learning about a few different uh, proportional properties that uh, show up in triangles. So let's go ahead and jump in. So <clears throat> the first one, first page, uh, we're going to go ahead and go over two properties. Now they end up looking the exact same, but it's um, two different, uh, it was one different piece here in this second property. So let's go ahead and begin with the first one. <clears throat> so if we have a triangle like this, okay, and if it's the case that XY, okay, XY, is parallel to RS, so in other words, that these two sides, right, they don't intersect, they have the same slope, all that stuff, uh, that it turns out that RX, so this portion, divided by this portion, ends up equaling this portion over uh, this portion, okay? So that's essentially the property. So let's go ahead and jump in and see a problem with that one, okay? So here it is. Um, we have that piece where you know we have a line in the middle that's parallel, line in the middle uh, that's parallel. Because of that, we can go ahead and say that these uh, are proportional parts. So we can just go ahead and say that 20 over x is equal to 18 over 9. Okay. Now, a couple different ways to do this one. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and since in recent videos we've talked about cross multiplying and solving, that's a perfectly fine method here, all right, but I'm going to show you a different one. So since, so to really, to dive into what proportional means. So if I have this proportion, right, we're going to think about what is actually going on here. So how do I get from like this 9 to the 18 by multiplication? Well, 9 times 2, and we're not, we're not doing this, we're, I'm just showing you, right, 9 times 2 gets me that 18. That has to be the case over here in order for that, this entire statement to be true. So we can think in our heads, what, what times 2 gets me that 20? And that's another different way to solve proportions. Now, keep in mind, this only really works when you have nice and neat numbers. Um, sometimes the numbers that you're working with are nasty, and it's definitely easier to cross-multiply when that's the case. But when you have something nice and neat like this, where it's like, you know, 9 times 2 gets you 18, uh, 10 times 2 gets you 20, then the problem becomes... Uh, not so hard. So, like I mentioned, right, 10 is the number that I can multiply by 2 to give me that 20. Therefore, x is 10. Cool? All right. Second property on this page. Um, if x and y are the midpoints of RT, okay, so now we're kind of still working with this. So, x is the midpoint um, here, right? So, you end up having, uh, let's go ahead and draw a new picture for this one, actually. So, uh, here we go. Something like this. We'll use the same letters, though. For consistency so r t s and then you've got this point and this point okay <clears throat> so there's that and then we've got uh let's see this is x y s okay uh so if x and y are the midpoints okay of r t and s t so x is a midpoint y is a midpoint right and i'm putting the tick marks because x is directly in the middle so therefore these two segments are the same uh, y is directly in the middle of this segment, so these two segments are the same. Then it is a mid-segment. Okay, we've talked about that word mid-segment, but a mid-segment essentially connects to midpoints. Okay, that's why we have a mid-segment there. Uh, and it says the triangle mid-segment theorem states that a mid-segment is parallel to the third side and is half the length. Okay, that's the big part. Is half the length. Um, yes, it's parallel. Okay, so you can you can put your parallel arrows. Uh, but the half the length part is the is the key part. So it's what it's saying is if x y is a mid segment, which it is here, uh, then x y is parallel, cool, and then x y is one half of the big length. Okay, let's see this uh, property in uh, in an example. So here we go. We have a picture, different orientation, right? But this segment right here is a mid segment. And the reason I know that is because it is a midpoint. Let's go ahead and zoom on this one uh, because I have a midpoint here, right? Midpoint here and then midpoint here, okay? It's saying that uh, that that length in the middle, the mid-segment, is half of the big one, okay? So literally on this one, right, uh, it's just um, x is equal to one-half of 35, okay? Uh, it's equal to one half of 35, therefore x is equal to, well, a couple different ways to do this. If you want to just leave it as a fraction, go for it. 35 over 2, nothing wrong with that, okay, 35 over 2, or 
you could get the decimal version, which is 17.5. And my face is in the way. There it is, 17.5 though. Okay, those are those two properties. Uh, so anytime you see uh, you know, the parallel uh, parts there, if you're trying to find these edges, you're just gonna set up a proportion real quick, right? And notice, I didn't even change like what it looked like, right? I just took it, 20, 20 over x, 20 over x equals 18 over nine. I left it like that, okay? So if you wanna kind of change it, you know, reorient it, if it's not oriented with this little nice parallel lines on the bottom, you might wanna do that. That's a good strategy. You can kind of change, rotate the triangle to, to where it looks like this, and then just set it up exactly as it looks. Okay, there's that page right there. Next property page. Okay, proportional parts with parallel lines. Um, so two different properties here, but they end up dealing with, um, you know, pictures that end up with like three sets of parallel lines, right? So you have two lines, okay, two lines here, S, uh, T and S, and you end up with one, two, three parallel lines right there. What ends up happening is a pretty simple property. The length, okay, the lengths end up being proportional. So A over B, A over B is equal to C over D. Let's go ahead and look at that property real quick. Uh, so number five, actually. Okay, so it's, this one's a little bit out of order. So number five. Um, so we have that, you know, piece, right? We've got a line and then a line, and we have one, two, three uh, parallel lines. Okay, since that's the case, I can say that this and this and this and this are proportional. So I've got three over x is equal to four over x plus four. Okay. I've got my proportion. This is not one of those ones where it's got some nice numbers, right? We've got some algebra, you know, we've got that x plus four, you know, it's not like, you know, three times something, it's really hard to get, you know, if it was six here or something like that, then you would just kind of multiply by two and make it a little bit easier. This is definitely gonna be one of those ones where you wanna cross multiply, okay? So here we go, uh, four times x, okay, so four times x equals three, but times this entire thing, don't forget to do that, right? If you see these pieces here, right? If you have multiple numbers uh, in the top of the bottom, right? You've got to do three times the entire thing. So three times x plus four. We're going to distribute here first, okay? So I've got four x is equal to, but what's three times x? That's just three x, okay? Three uh, times four, that's 12. March 12th is my birthday, so I like these numbers. Okay, uh, anyway, so I've got 4x is equal to 3x uh, plus 12, okay? I want to get my x's on the same side, so I'm going to get rid of this 3x, so minus 3x, minus 3x, okay? And we're running out of space, but 4x minus 3x, that's x, okay? This goes away, and then I've got uh, just x is equal to 12, okay? Um, and there's that one. I'm done on that particular problem, okay? So uh, when we have those pieces, right? Where you've got lines separated by one, two, three parallel lines, you can set up a proportion again, just just as you're looking at it, right? Even if it's flipped over, right, the other way, set it up as is. Okay, so you just you put your parallel lines kind of uh, horizontal when you're looking at them, right? Horizontal is you know horizontal like this, horizontal like this, horizontal like this, and you just set up your proportion, and you're basically done. Okay. Now the other property is that if you have a picture like this, same sort of picture, one, two, three parallel lines, and if you know um, that, you know, u over v, okay, so like if you have a piece, this and this piece is equal to one, right, then you can actually say uh, that the other one is also, uh, you know, the two pieces over each other are equal to one. In other words, what ends up happening is you're saying, you know, if, if u divided by v, is equal to one. You're saying that these two are the same. So if you have one, uh, you know, this if this piece is equal to this piece, then it is also true that this piece is equal to this piece. Okay, let's jump in and take a look at it. Okay, so in this one, I've got one, two, three parallel lines. I've got my uh, two lines here. Okay, and I notice I have a tick mark. So now, as opposed to doing what we were doing earlier, notice it's the same sort of picture, right? As opposed to what we were doing earlier. We can actually just go ahead and say that this and this are the same. So like literally 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 1 because I had the tick marks. Okay, so we can just do 2x plus 4 equal to 3x minus 1. I'm going to get my x's on the same side. So I'm going to get rid of my 2x here, get rid of my 2x here. 
Okay, so I end up with 4 is equal to 1x minus 1. Okay, I'm going to swing that uh, minus 1 over, right, because I want to get that x by itself. So I've got plus 1, plus 1, so I've got 5 is equal to x. Nothing wrong with writing it like that. Maybe it looks a little, little bit weird. If you're more comfortable, you know, you can certainly write x equals 5. But either way, okay? And that's it on uh, x, okay? Now, the other piece to that is you're saying, the property, right, is saying that if these two are the same, then you've also got these two are the same, okay? So, um, like, like it, it is up here, right? So this and this are the same, then you've also got these two are the same. Okay, so you could also say that 3y is equal to 2y plus 2. But again, you can only say that if you know one of them is the same. All right, so you've got 3y is equal to 2y. We've got minus 2y minus 2y. And we've got y is equal to 2. Okay, there's that problem. All right, next page. Okay, so this one's actually pretty similar to what we were doing the other day. Really not much too big of a stretch. So it says when two triangles are similar, corresponding altitudes, angle bisectors, and medians are all proportional to the corresponding sides. So what this is really saying is that, uh, you know, when we know two triangles are similar, all the pieces are proportional and everything like that. It's also, it, it, what it's saying is that the altitudes and angle bisectors and medians are also included in that. For example, in this problem, we have to know that they're proportional, okay? We've got to know that they're proportional first. So really the instructions should say the triangles are proportional, okay? So, but when we're working in this kind of like weird closed environment of like a math problem, um, with, with these problems that we're working on, we can assume that they are similar, okay? So, but I'm going to go ahead and write um, the triangles are similar. Really that should be in the instructions are similar. Okay, uh, so on this one, uh, we, we've got to know that they're similar, and since they are, that means I can say that since this is an angle bisector, right, I, I know that there's some sort of relationship, you know, there's a scale factor between the 24 and the x, okay, but there's also a scale factor here, the same scale factor between that 10 and the 8, so what we can do is we can set up a proportion, now there's multiple different ways to do this, okay, um, but the 24 and the x match up, okay, and then the 10 and the 8 match up. So now it's just a matter of however you want to write your proportion. I'm going to choose to do big number over the small one here. Okay, and uh, you know, big one over small one. So 24 matches up with the X. So I'm going to go ahead and put that X on top and then over 8. Cross multiply, solve, done. Okay, so uh, cross multiply here. These aren't nice and neat numbers, so we're not going to use my little fancy trick. Uh, but we get 10X is equal to, let's see, 192, okay, just to double check, got nervous there, 8 times 24, yeah, 192, okay, so we've got 10x is equal to 192, that means we're going to divide by 10 on both sides, I get x is equal to 19.2, okay, so not too big of a stretch from what we were doing before, it's just saying, you know, every once in a while you're going to have the altitudes, angle, bisectors, and medians, and uh, which is what we learned, part, you know, those definitions we learned last semester, but applying these to the problems, uh, you don't necessarily need to know those definitions too much. You just got to notice, oh, okay, it's part of the triangle. Uh, it's just saying that, you know, the altitudes, and angle, bisectors, and medians are also proportional. They are also included in the proportionality. So on this one, okay, you got to know the triangles are proportional. Uh, and let's go ahead and try our trick here, okay? 18 to 36, okay? 18 times what? 18 times what will give me that 36? Well, times 2, okay? So I've got to be consistent here. So what times 2 will give me that 20? 10 times 2 will give me that 20, okay? You could also cross multiply and solve, uh, but that's another example. This one happens to be a median, right? This is a median, that 20 and then that x length. Those are medians, so it's also included in the proportionality of the triangle. And this one right here, let's also kind of <clears throat> reason through it. Um, we've done a lot of cross-multiplying and solving, so let's try to reason through this one. Well, I've got 10 and 10, okay? I've got 8 and 8. This length 
is an altitude. This is also an altitude. So we've got to know that they're proportional. They are. Just throwing this out there. Uh, they're proportional by side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. That's the same proportion here. 8 over 10. 8 over 10. Okay. Um, it's also proportional by angle, angle. Angle, angle. Right. One, two pairs of angles. All right. So uh, on this one, right, uh, let's see. We can go ahead and do – sorry, I got a little lost. Okay. Well, let, let's go ahead and match the 8 to the 10. Okay. Let's match the 8 to the 10. And then what matches up with the X, right? And we want to match something up with the X because that's the one we're trying to find. So we got to match something up with the X. Okay. So X to the 7. Okay. Now there's a bunch of different ways to write proportions. Okay. Maybe this time I'll change it up. Let's go ahead and do x over 7. Okay, x over 7. Okay, but when I put that x on top, what has to go on top first? Okay, well, look at the, look at the uh, comparison, right? x to 7. That means I've got to do 10 to 8. Okay, so 10 over 8. Cross multiply, solve, because I have a ratio equals a ratio. So I've got 8x equals 70. X is equal to 70 over 8. Okay, that's one way that you could just leave it. Maybe, you, you know, if you wanted a fraction answer, these are both divisible by 2, so 35 over 4. I'm okay with that if you want to leave that as your answer. But if you want to do the decimal, that is also okay. So 70 divided by 8 ends up being 8.75. And that is your answer. Okay. So, medians, altitudes, angle bisectors also included in the proportionality of the triangles if they are proportional. And last page, maybe the easiest one. I don't know. Depends on how you think about it. Uh, but the triangle angle bisector theorem. It sounds fancy, but we'll look at it and we'll get an idea of what we're doing. So, an angle bisector in a triangle separates the opposite sides in two segments that are proportional to the length of the other two sides. Here's what you end up with. Okay? If you get an angle bisector, so let's go ahead and look at the angle bisectors in the pictures. Okay, angle bisector, right, because these two angles are the same. Okay, these two angles, so that line is an angle bisector. And then over here, this and this are the same, so that's an angle bisector. Okay, now what ends up happening with angle bisectors is that you end up with all proportional parts. So. What's nice about these, though, is if, is if you're looking at the angle bisector kind of vertically, right? So this is a vertical line, right? If you look at it vertically, you just write the proportion of exa exactly as you see it. So 25 over 20, this over this equals this over this. Okay? So really, the, the proportion kind of lends itself to it when you're writing it, like when you look at it like that. Okay? So that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, cross multiply and solve. Okay, let's get 10x. Let's take some time to do this in our head. I know that looks like a hard one. 25 times 28, that looks so hard. Okay, but, right, you know how many quarters are in a dollar. Okay, so that means, well, how many times does 25 go into 100? Four times. Okay, so 25 times 4 is 100. And then how many times does 4 go into 28. Well, 4 goes into 28 seven times. So this is going to be 700. Okay. Um, essentially, what you're doing there, just to kind of show you the side work, is 24 times 5 is 100. And then you've got 4. Um, since, since you've got 28 divided by 4 is 7, you need to do 100 times 7 to get that 700. Okay. Kind of some mental math. You're breaking things up into pieces. Uh, you're doing a little bit at a time. Okay? Uh, and then 10x is equal to 700. x is equal to 70. Okay? And there we go. There's that one. Number two. Okay? Different orientation. Uh, remember, the trick I told you is to look at that angle bisector vertically. That angle bisector is kind of shifted to the side right now. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and turn it. Like that. Okay? And so once I do that, now it makes the problem way easier. I can just do x over x plus 7. Okay, and I'll go ahead and write it. x over x plus 7. x over x plus 7. Got those. Equals 
11 over 17. Okay, that's the proportion. All right, and cross multiply once again and solve. So 17x is equal to 11. Ah, it's 11. Excuse me, 11 times this entire thing. Okay, so you got to do 11 times all of that right there. Okay, so 17x equals 11x plus, right, and we're distributing here, distribute, distribute, uh, plus 77. Okay, we subtract 11x, subtract 11x. I've got 6x is equal to 77. Perfectly fine answer just to divide by 6 and call it. So we end up with uh, this right here, 77 over 6. There's nothing wrong with writing your fraction or your answer like that. Now, if it's multiple choice, maybe you don't have uh, a fraction in your multiple choice, right? But there is uh, absolutely nothing wrong with leaving your answer like that. I'm just going to go ahead and box it. Okay? Uh, but, yes, technically, right, you're probably going to have multiple choice, so you got about 12.83. We'll go ahead and round it. 12.83. Okay, those are the properties. Okay, so uh, you know, take a look, um, kind of match your problems up with the different properties, and uh, make sure that you are setting up the proportions correctly. All right, that is the big part on that. But you guys take care. Hope you have a great day. See you later.